Hello, welcome back. This is part two of the group two trends discussion. Um, so we're talking about group two. We've just talked about the fact that uh, thermal stability increases as you go down the group because of the high charge density of the elements of the atoms at the top of the group. Uh, so we had a graph like this, which had increasing thermal stability as you go across the group. Now you could use this to help you with um, the solubility and solubility of carbonates and sulfates, other large anions, um, decreases as you go down the group. Okay, so we get a pattern like this. Now you don't usually talk about beryllium for these solubility trends, you tend to talk about the others, but we'll, we'll put that in for now. So the solubility decreases as you go down the group. So you could think about the fact that the magnesium uh, high charge density makes the carbonate unstable, so it's um, more likely to dissociate from it. But whatever you want, you can whatever way allows you to remember that. But the large anions are the most soluble. Okay, um, so the other trend, the reverse trend, is for um, hydroxides and single valency anions, and the trend is the opposite. So you just need to remem remember that the trends are opposite. For the solubility of um, hydroxides, the um, solubility increases as you go down the group. All right, the final thing I want to talk about is the melting point of the group 2 metals. That's the hardest thing. So first of all, you need to remember you've got um, metallic structure. So you've got your metal ions with um, delocalized electrons, a metal structure, yeah? Delocalized electrons whizzing around uh, which means they conduct electricity and conduct heat, um, as we've discussed previously about metallic bonding. Um, what's important here is the fact that really there's tr two trends going on. If you um, take uh, calcium, um, you'll find that um, melting point uh, from calcium onwards decreases as you go down the group. Now we're talking about melting points around about a thousand degrees give or take so we're still high melting points but um, the pattern for beryllium and magnesium is separate it's almost kind of got like two lines you've got that line and that line but because it's a trend we tend to link them up now the reason is that there's a degree of covalent bonding in these whereas this is all purely ionic and it's the change in the type of bonding characteristics that cause that difference. But there is a trend. Magnesium is the odd one out. That's un or particularly low or unusually low. Okay, so think of it as two trends. You might well just be asked about calcium onwards, but if you were asked about the others, then you and asked why magnesium is no low, then you would just say, oh, it's to do with covalent character in the bonding, a change in the form of the um, metallic bonding that is present present in uh, the metal. Okay, so that concludes trends in group two. Any questions? Obviously, you can email questions from the website.